the body of Christ is full of a lot of ignorance when it comes to the issue of prayer when it comes to the issue of warfare when it comes to the issue of the interaction between the realm of the spirit and the earth realm there is gross ignorance in the body of Christ as to the mysteries that are responsible for these operations that's what I've been seeking to do to teach us and help us understand how men can contact the realm of the spirit because man by design is the only entity that on legal grounds has the authorization to make contact with the realm of the spirit and make contact with the physical realm at will every other entity needs a system of authorization an altar is a system of authorization i want to share a few things with you about altars an altar is a system of authorization an altar is not just a monument it is a system of authorization an altar is a platform write it down where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds an altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds i'm taking out time for us to write this because i want us to understand it a spirit or an entity cannot enter another entity another territory without the configuration to suit that territory for instance a spirit should not be in the earth without a body that's against the law of territory if you must function in the earth realm as a territory you must have a body are we together now so every spirit including god is at the mercy of a body or an altar to find expression in a territory the first death recorded in the bible happened on account of altars two men brothers went to offer sacrifices and all of them created platforms that was way before the old testament adam had access to mysteries and he taught his children how to invoke the presence of god and it's not the way it is today there and then you will know whether what you did worked or not and the bible says abel did something and cain did something too and all of a sudden the sacrifice of abel ascended the heavens are we together now and then for cain nothing happened and then cain killed his brother and blood spilled upon the earth and he thought it was over but the Bible told us that discussion continued in the realm of the spirit. Something about that activity called the presence of God. And God said, okay, there is a discussion going on in heaven. But this discussion is between me and blood. So what is going on? He said, am I my brother's keeper? He said, ah, don't tell lies. There is a witness standing in heaven here. That blood, a symbol of an altar, is granted me authorization to probe you. And because of that, I'm going to curse you. Judgment still happened even after Abel died. Listen very carefully to what I'm teaching you. Supernatural system of authorization. An altar, let me give you one more definition. Is where covenants are activated and maintained. An altar is the platform where covenants are both activated and maintained a covenant cannot work without an altar it is an altar that gives life to a covenant it's impossible for altars to work covenants to work without an altar an altar is like the battery that powers this gadget for instance the potentials of this gadget is only seen when you slot in the battery that's what an altar is it gives life to a covenant now write this down please 
altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions and altars can be people altars can be physical monuments like we had in the old testament they would erect stones altars can be institutions like the jerusalem temple that was built by solomon he said oh god if anybody faces this temple and prays hearken to that person's prayer not because of the rightness of the prayer but a covenant that was enacted there and an altar was raised to that effect the reason why salvation the covenant of salvation can work is because there is an altar that was erected not just in the earth in heaven the book of hebrews tells us that jesus the high priest carried his blood to the most holy place in heaven and poured it upon an altar that is still speaking today that is the basis upon which whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, whether in you are sleeping, whether you are awake, it kicks that reality, you will be saved. Because there is an altar that eternally secures that. There are many platforms that God has created to allow spirit entities to find expression in the earth realm to come and assist men to come and empower men but if we do not understand those platforms then we will not be able to take advantage of it and one of it is what i'm talking about tonight an altar of prayer as a system of authorization an altar of prayer as a mystery that on legal grounds authorizes the realm of the spirit to influence the activities of men here in the earth realm please write this down the most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life. The most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life. Not Bible study. No, sir. The most accurate measure of how healthy your spiritual life is, is your prayer life. No matter what else is working in your life, if your prayer life is dead then you are not spiritual are we together anyone can preach anyone can teach but not everyone can pray never forget this it's very easy to preach very easy to teach but it's a sacrifice to pray any and everyone can preach any and everyone can teach but not everyone can pray because prayer is a sacrifice is a mystery let me tell you something God is so meticulous about the revelation of altars that he rules the world sitting on an altar the very throne room is like a shrine surrounded with mysteries the epicenter of the throne room is the very throne that he sits upon that throne you see is an altar it's what makes him the ancient of days he sits upon that altar and manipulates things according to his predetermined counsel doesn't have to walk around heaven to find out who is rebellious there is a system that has been designed to ensure order Anyone who will walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar. Everyone who seeks to walk in true dominion must function from the standpoint of an altar. Tonight we are particularly looking at the altar of prayer. The ministry of prayer is one that is largely hated by many. Either because of the spiritual energy that it involves or because of the sacrifice and the discipline that is involved in the ministry of prayer but scattered around scripture all through the bible are scriptures that encourage believers to pray and it makes them understand that their lives and their victories dependent on it in luke chapter 18 verse 1 the bible says he 
spake this parable to the end that means the goal of this parable was to teach men a lesson and the lesson is that men ought always to pray and not to faint always always not a circumstantial activity men ought always to pray and not to faint in matthew chapter 21 when you read from verse 13 the bible says jesus entered the temple and he saw people buying and selling and doing all kinds of things in the temple and he was angry and in verse 13 chapter 21 he scattered everywhere and said my house shall be called a house of prayer my house shall be called a house of prayer it's impossible to be a man of prayer and ignore the word but it's possible to be a man of the word and ignore prayer when the devil wants to deceive you he makes you look like you have an option to choose between prayer and the word and then he indoctrinates you and carries takes advantage of your passion for knowledge and keeps you to be cold and dry and lukewarm and all of a sudden you begin to search scriptures like a philosopher and there is no power no grace no efficiency every great ministry starts from the altar of prayer any ministry that does not start as a prayer ministry will not last it's impossible the ministry of jesus started as a prayer ministry the moment he was filled with the holy spirit he was driven of the spirit 40 days and 40 nights traveling in prayer and the bible says he returned in the power of the spirit all of a sudden his fame began to spread devils will fly around and say no 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 you have come to destroy us before our time the ministry of prayer In James chapter 5 verse 16 please give it to us James chapter 5 verse 16 I want you to understand this tonight is an admonishment and then we're going to pray James 5 verse 16 he says confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that he may be healed then he says the effectual prayer of a righteous man he says avail it much avail it much amplified says it is dynamic in its working it can produce results and we're going to examine these results that the prayer of a believer is not just an empty talk it's not just an exercise in futility it's not just a religious system to feel spiritual that every time men pray there is an effect now theologically speaking the classic scripture that is used to represent the activity of altars is Genesis chapter 28. We are not turning there for time's sake, but many of us know it. I'm just giving you a little theological background. Um, Abraham had passed across a region and the Bible says that he set up an altar there. And many years later, Jacob, his son, are we together now? A son in the flesh now, a, a generation, now was passing that place and the night time came. And he felt look let me just lie down and sleep and the bible says he put stones together and laid down to sleep he didn't pray for an encounter he didn't beg for an encounter the moment he slept the bible says his eyes were open and he saw strange activities happening the angels ascending descending it was like a, a portal a ladder and at the top of it was god himself and he was surprised when he woke up he said wow this is a portal this is the gate of heaven i saw something that happened a portal an altar the lord was in this place and i knew not now watch this is because jacob slept there and recorded his experience that we know that that place had an effect do you know that whether or not jacob slept there you can be passing peacefully and for whatever reason cross across that place and something happens to you all of a sudden you find out that the sickness just disappeared you didn't pray now you are wondering what happened now you don't know it was jacob's experience that helped us to understand that there was such a thing the same way elijah when he was about to leave he knew that there was a, an exact portal 
that can take men physically he went beyond the Jordan and he said Elisha asked I'm about to leave and right before his eyes he saw chariots when Jesus was about to levitate to go to heaven he knew exactly where to stand when he, they watched him and he began to rise there are physical portals in the earth that open up to the realm of the spirit not visions physical places a man can stand there today and have encounters whether you are the prophetic or not which is understand this many people understand this i wish i had time to teach you on altars because i would teach you that one of the natural ways of establishing an altar is consistency of a practice within a region it opens up an altar consistency of practice within a region that that atmosphere is spiritually acclimatized the moment you practice something consistently you attract the spirit dimension of that thing to come and find out what is going on so if i keep killing people in a particular region i don't need to invite any spirit i create a portal the moment a spirit comes in partnership with me that becomes an altar that's why in many regions many campuses they have different regions some have prayer mountains some have we used to have years ago um, in the campus there somewhere they call lawn tennis court that was a physical solid portal that's where you see people carry their rechargeable and their socks for mosquitoes and go there and lie down and say oh god if you don't help me i'm dead and by the next morning there is a miracle you find people just mind their business standing and start shaking because activities over many years there were people making use of that ground and it became sanctified angelic activities became so much there it was it was like how you do home cell because there are visitations and many members are within a region you dedicate a place and say look all of you within this region you can freely find expression here consistency can open up a portal are you learning something tonight that's how many of our parents made our homes certain portals every time they continued doing certain things and they did not know when they invited the spirit dimensions you see let me tell you consistency attracts the realm of the spirit consistent ask those who practice other religions you know how they invoke spirits enchantments the same word repeated over a long period of time how do they celebrate traditional festivals in many villages the people keep dancing doing the same thing for hours and then it becomes like they are supercharged at a point the spirit component of that activity has come i like you to say lord open my eyes say it open my eyes open my eyes there is a law in the dealings of god with men and he says whatever you yield yourself to he says you will become a slave of that thing have, have you have you are we together if i practice obedience consistently i have yielded my members to obedience i become a slave to obedience are we together now you see watch this if i steal this handkerchief watch this if i steal this handkerchief out of my volition it's not enough to bring the spirit of theft in my life no if i do it again and i do it again that i don't know i'm invoking a mystery by my consistency a time will come the spirit that operates on men will say i'm being invited within a territory it will look for the territory where the physical dimension of what is bringing it is the same way if i begin to pray i may not feel comfortable but as i'm praying i'm invoking a dimension of the operation of the spirit of the spirit of prayer and supplication a day will come in that place that dimension will be revealed in me supernaturally 
Are you learning something? Because you see, not all altars were consciously built, but they are still altars. So it is when I say altars that are destroying you, it doesn't mean you have to go to your village and waylay your uncle and say, if you don't tell us what you have done, we will beat you. No, he may be innocent. This is where the prophetic ministry must be guided. Because every time we talk of altar, they think it must be traceable to a real experience. No. The mysteries that you do consistently are building altars. And they eventually become invitations for spirits. Whether the spirit of God or any kind of demon spirit. Have you had an experience? I'm not saying you should do it. But you've seen it in ministries. Where somebody can come, no church service. Just enter the church and come and lie down on the altar. And roll. Maybe for a child. And go back and have triplets. Now question, was anybody preaching? But because the, the power and the presence of God has found expression upon that ground for a long time you have invited you have invoked a dimension whether service is at work or not that portal remains open all that it takes is your faith once your faith meanders that atmosphere it happens to you samuel was an altar he didn't have an altar he was an altar you never came near samuel and went back to say no a young man came around Samuel and stood naked, prophesied morning till night. That's an altar. When Saul went and met Samuel, they were looking for the donkey. As soon as they saw Samuel, they knew their lives were going to be altered. I told you altars are not just physical monuments. You can be an altar. And that's one of the things that prayer does. You don't build a monument. Your life becomes the activation of several. Listen, the beauty of prayer is not just for you to continue talking for the rest of your life, but that you get to a state of consistency where even in your silence, listen, you have become an altar. Spiritual activities can be happening around you. So that as a living altar, I activate possibilities just by walking. You come around me and something happens to you. I didn't directly pray for you. You didn't even know you had that problem. But an atmosphere that I was carrying implicated you. Why is prayer important? Why do we have to build an altar of prayer? three reasons very quickly number one prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him write it down prayer is God's authorized system of communion and fellowship with him the Bible is very clear that the communion of the spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with God and that system of koinonia is through prayer prayer is one of god's authorized system not the only authorized system but one of the major authorized system for communion and fellowship luke chapter 6 let's take a few scriptures very quickly luke chapter 6 and verse 12. please give it to us luke chapter 6 and verse 12 then we'll look at matthew 26 verse 36 and down to 39 is actually to 44 but we'll stop at 39 quickly Luke chapter 6 verse 12 look up everyone please it says and it came to pass those days speaking about Jesus now that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God communion Jesus was not just praying prayer requests like we do during miracle service remember he was God he still is God 
but he went to spend time all night communing communing give us matthew matthew 26 and verse 36 matthew 26 verse 36 then come at jesus with them listen this was uh, his passion was about to start then come at jesus with them unto a place called gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit here while i go and pray yonder and let's watch what the bible calls prayer and he took from him peter and the two sons of zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy 38 then he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me please continue quickly and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying saying this sounds like a communication a conversation my father if it be possible let this call pass off me when you read down to verse 44 he prayed the same thing three times prayer is God's authorized system of communion not just a platform for petitions prayer is how power is transferred to men it's an authorized system of communion is your spiritual system of intimacy and intercourse in the place of prayer that's where the exchange happens between divinity Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit but never manifested the power of the Holy Ghost after prayer the Bible says he returned not full of the Spirit but in the power of the Spirit in Luke 17 don't turn there John 17 sorry Jesus himself began to communicate with the father as usual and he says father the hour has come watch communion to prayer the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you and then he began to converse look at all the platforms till today listen till today how Jesus advocates for believers in heaven is still through prayer the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for the saints. Why will you intercede when you are already seated by the right hand? It's a system. It's not about proximity. It's a system of communion and communication. If you are not a man of prayer, you are not a woman of prayer, you can be sure that the reality of communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost, that reality, you see, let me tell you something. If you are not open to prayer, you will never understand what we are saying. You will think it's just, um, I'm not just talking of corporate prayer. Corporate prayer is great. But you must have the secret place. That's where he comes to meet with you. That's when he tells you things he cannot tell any other person. The reason why you don't hear God is because you are not used to his voice in the secret place. He has not trained you to hear him. So you hear everything and you call it him. I was counseling a couple some I think I don't know if it was last week and um, the mother was outside and the father came in with the daughters maybe they are even here listening to me and they held a little baby as soon as the baby shouted from outside the mother identified the voice and came to check what was happening with the baby and I said koinonia that's intimacy because there is a union that baby is sucking from the same mother their interaction the mother did not train herself to hear the voice she was implicated by that koinonia so anywhere she, there were many people families with their children but when she had her own he said my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice meaning if you cannot ask hear his voice find out whether you are his sheep or not don't assume you are his sheep assumption is costly in the school of intimacy you must verify that there is contact between you and God there are pastors that don't pray so they get angry they think the manifestation of the power of God is magic there are dimensions impartation will not give you you must dig your well by yourself you must create an altar a system you must gain mastery in the realm of the spirit you must be used to the spiritual communication that has been act is like a tailor-made system of god reaching you 
God must know how to reach you on serious informations. God must know how to reach you on trivial informations. He must train your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. That place of training is the secret place. I will never trade anything for my time with him. That's where men are built. That's where there is an exchange. See, let me tell you, holding a mic and teaching is not difficult. Holding a mic and preaching is not difficult. But communicating life, that one is a derivative of your altar. That's why we sleep in church. That's why our churches are full of dry bones. From the preacher to those listening, all dry bones. People stand and talk. They say something that should bless you and you wonder why it doesn't bless you. Because there's no altar. They are standing unassisted by the realm of the spirit.